House and the Senate, uh, where they make promises on things that just have no relation to any truth at all. So uh, I can't respond to someone who I've found in my experience not to be truthful. Follow up, Jason. Uh, that covers it for me for now. Um, I'll let somebody else step in if there if there is anybody else. Uh, Jason, before you uh, sign off, uh, I want to thank you for your interest in this subject. Uh, you know, I, I know where your listenership is, and uh, anything that <coughs> any of us can do to advocate for the invisible on this topic is very important. Thank you. Hi, Treasurer. This is Anari Patani with Kaiser Health News. Uh, thank you for the call. Um, I was particularly interested in what you mentioned about uh, credit scores impacting folks' abilities to qualify for certain jobs. Um, and I was wondering if you could speak a little bit more about what you've found on that and if it's limited to public sector jobs or if it applies in the private sector as well. Uh, as I started, thank you for your question. I, uh, you may not know, I, I have 21 major duties and responsibilities as the state treasurer. And one of those is chairing the state banking commission. Now, chairing the state banking commission uh, means that we regulate banks that you may have heard of, like BB&T Trust and First Citizen, some of the largest institutions in the United States. So when I started investigating uh, the impact on credit scores and the people to apply for or get essential jobs. I wanted to start there because I think the Banking Commission is, is obviously very highly regulated with, from the state and federal level. Uh, we are in the process of putting a report together uh, on this particular subject, and since I've been talking about this subject, uh, I've had many, many people come up to me out uh, at, at speeches throughout the state who've told me that they, in their HR departments, also look at credit scores. So I think this is a, uh, a very important topic, and it all goes back uh, to this, this foundation, and that is that for a person's credit score to be weaponized based on a product they would rather not have consumed because that would mean they're healthy, and when they tried to inquire what it costs, they were told it's none of their business, is something that we should never, ever be tolerated again. And then when you put on top of that the potential of people not being able to certify or hold certain positions or, or get the tip of the hat or the benefit of the doubt when it comes to actually getting some of these jobs, it just makes it doubly worse. It's even worse when you consider the fact that over $100 million worth of these individuals should have received charity care to start with, therefore they would have never gotten the bill, therefore there would never have been a weaponization. Follow up. Thank you. Follow up. And here, do you have a, a, a follow up you'd like to make? No, I'm all set for now. Thank you. Anir, is uh, Elizabeth Rosenthal still with you? Yes, she's our editor in chief. Yeah. I, uh, I say that not to put you on the spot. I'm glad she's there. I'm glad you're there. But when I was at the Council of State meeting this morning, I had this article from me, with me, from the New York Times from several years ago. And I'm going to hold this up. You're not going to be able to read it from the screen. Uh, but the headline uh, is, When the Frauds Are Legal. Now, any of you who know anything about compliance and, and legal staff, you just imagine what Dr. Rosenthal had to go through to even get this printed in the New York Times. And this was an article called Where the Frauds Are Legal, where, where the frauds are all legal, by Elizabeth Rosenthal, a doctor, I believe, and not an uh, editor of Kaiser Health News. And it's about an experience that her loved one had uh, with the surgery. And I'm just going to skip down the sixth paragraph. What I'm talking about here were the bills that we received were for things that simply did, didn't happen, or only kind of sort of happened, or were mislabeled as things that they were not or so nebulously defined that I couldn't figure out what we might be paying for. So when we talk, start talking about 
uh, the weaponization of your credit score, we're talking about it in the context of a bill that even someone as knowledgeable and experienced and sophisticated as Dr. Rosenthal is, uh, has the exact same experience as everyone else. Thank you for mentioning that, Chair Kubel. Appreciate it. I'll let her know. I carry it around everywhere, as you can see. So, does anybody else have any questions? Okay. Any follow ups, Teresa? Teresa, did you have a question? No, I'm good at this time. Thanks, Treasurer. Oh, thank you. I just, uh, it's the first time we've done it this way, so we're all kind of trying to figure it out, dance together. So uh, uh, we appreciate you uh, uh, joining us and thank staff for putting this together. Uh, uh, stay tuned for more reports to come out of us regarding uh, what's happening with healthcare in North Carolina. And uh, I'll just remind some of those who may be new to this topic. Uh, former Treasurer Harlan Bowles uh, warned us about this in 1977. Uh, Bill Gates warned us about this 16 years ago. State Alder Beth Wood warned us about this 12 years ago. The State Employees Association warned us about this 10 years ago. And uh, Warren Buffett talked about rising health care costs being the tapeworm on the U.S. economy four years ago. And Senator Elizabeth Warren, as a presidential candidate, said the leading cause of bankruptcy in the United States are things associated with health care billing. Uh, what do all those people generally have in common? Uh, they're all Democrats, and I'm not. And that's why I say this is not a Democrat-Republican issue or an unaffiliated libertarian issue. Uh, this is a moral issue. And there's no reason, especially as the largest consumer, the largest purchaser of health care in North Carolina in this state, on behalf of those that teach, protect, and serve, that we can't figure out a way to do it better and more efficiently on behalf of those individuals. So I want to thank all of you for joining us. Thank staff for putting this together. And as, uh, as many of you know, that this year uh, the staff received the Sunshine Award uh, from Elon University, and that was not based on the treasurer's disposition. Uh, it was based on uh, being transparent and uh, accessible. And anybody who has a follow-up question, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you, and uh, have a great fall.